I'm here in the village of Selu in the Democratic Republic of the Congo with some incredible cassavas and some really happy farmers. Why am I here? You'll find out on this episode of Your Blue Continent! <laughs> Life everywhere in the civil war-torn Democratic Republic of the Congo is a challenge. In the rural district of Kisantu, about a hundred kilometers or two and a half hours of driving, south of the capital of Kinshasa, food security, lack of economic opportunities, and deforestation have marked the modern era. One organization that has been navigating the tough seas of Congolese development for the past 60 years has been Caritas, an international Catholic charity. In Kisantu district, its goal is to reduce the hunger and poverty of 2,260 rural households. To get the full understanding of their efforts, I traveled down to Kisantu, where I met with the project manager, Freddie, and sister Emily, who moved here from Virginia more than 20 years ago. Though it's just approximately 100 kilometers from the capital of Kinshasa, traveling to the Kisantu Catholic Mission can take several hours and an experienced driver who knows how to navigate around destroyed patches of roadway. Kisanto City is home to 78,000 people and an impressive cathedral, Our Lady of Seven Sorrows. The people who are part of the food security and reforestation project have been learning new methods for planting and gained access to seeds. I was happy to finally meet the project manager, Freddie. Freddie was an agronomist who went to university and became a professor. He became a project manager with Caritas because he cared deeply about his community. The project, renewed for three more years in 2018, is funded by NORAID and Norwegian Caritas and has six objectives, including food security with seed programs, environmental reforestation, commercialization of products, good governance, including the strengthening of local organizations, and gender and conflict resolution, including land rights. A key aspect is the planting of fast-growing acacia trees, which allow agronomists to extend the forest out into the savanna area and still harvest some of the trees to make charcoal. Making charcoal and selling firewood to Kinshasa has become the primary source of revenue for the people in that area. The demand in Kinshasa for charcoal is increasing. Farmers are planting three trees for every one that they harvest, and though new international companies like Beebox are trying to extend solar access for rural families in Africa, charcoal demand remains high. Because the electrical grid in Kinshasa is totally insufficient, as much as half of the people in the world's largest francophone city still cook with charcoal. This Caritas program is encouraging landowners to make their property available for these activities. One landowner, instead of asking for a share of the harvest, simply asked workers to plant more trees instead. What is the direct benefit of the landowner for having the trees? Why does he choose to do it? There's several Is advantages. First of all, he wants to re restore the forest. Okay, he it's personal desire then. And there are and other you advantages you to the trees. You have, for example, you have um, the caterpillars which are edible, you have um, mm -hmm. mushrooms mm -hmm. and other things that come with the tree. And there used to be a lot of wild animals, you know, okay. antelopes and things that have all disappeared and he's hoping these would, if the forest is restored, the animals may also come back. Let's get out and see some of these ideas at work. Freddie then introduced me to my companions for the day. Mommy, Mary Louise, Pappy, Raymond, and Marquesas, and my talented translator Solange. And we headed down the road to meet Caritas' beneficiaries. First, I was taken to the village of Selo, where I met workers who were planting acacia trees in the savanna to extend the forest habitat and provide a sustainable source of charcoal for families in Kinshasa. They've been growing more varieties of crops, such as green beans and ground nuts, which only take three months to harvest. But the king crop for the Congo is cassava. So says my interpreter, Solange. This one is our main food. You can eat the rice you say, I didn't eat. Mm. Mm -hmm. Until you eat cassava. 
New techniques devised by a national program have resulted in expanded knowledge and improved results. First, planting the cassava further apart, as opposed to the method taught traditionally, improves the size of the cassava root. In the past, farmers would place them two sticks apart from each other. Now they plant them three sticks apart. The way they used to plant farming, now they've improved because maybe there is technology. Second, when growing crops in the savanna, practitioners used to have to rest the soil four to five years, but now they leave the cassava leaves on the ground to recharge the soil, and they can replant every year. This results in better harvests. There is no hunger in my house. The cassava roots are growing bigger, 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 bigger. With so much cassava growing, they are happy to share it with anyone who visits. Many participants reported that as a result of the project, they have been able to pay their children's tuition expenses. God willing, my children will study. I can see that now it is easy to pay my children school fees. Mm. It is helping me to my future, my children's future, seeing our children moving forward. Another aspect of the project is gender equality, a topic rarely discussed prior to international intervention. And now you're getting a better benefit from your work? Uh, yes! You are winning! So she's welcoming you. Merci beaucoup. And there's no better atmosphere for discussing gender topics than with a nice warm glass of palm wine. Sometimes men can hold a, a baby and when even the gloves are dirty, he's not able to change that baby until the, <laughs> the woman comes. That behavior is not good. Yeah, but it's uh, it's common all over the world. Hotels. Même quand on parle. Hotels, c'est commun. Ils disent c'est commun. It was time to leave these good people and travel to the village of Kikomu. In Kikomu, the people had planted nearly 1,000 acacia trees also and learned how to plant crops like onions and potatoes which were previously unknown to them. Their success had allowed them to save enough money to buy a brick-making machine that they could rent out to generate more profit for the village. It is a, again a way of fighting to keeping forests, not cutting trees right. when using bricks. The chief was kind enough to make his land available for these purposes. I gave easily because it was about the growth, the development of the area. I cannot be selfish. Finally, we visited the village of Kiseyisa where, along with trees and honey production... As much as I love swarms of bees... Project participants were using more efficient stoves that consumed less firewood and even producing some palm oil. One participant named Ndongala had improved his situation enough to purchase a vehicle. From the money I got when I sold the yeah. honey, I'm able to get the motorcycle for transport. Yeah. That motorcycle you can do taxi man yeah. picking paper here, here and there. So what did we learn in today's episode? In this episode, we saw that mixed-use reforestation can be used to move even developing countries toward a more sustainable bioenergy footprint. We also saw that economic benefits can be multiplied when people reinvest in themselves. And lastly, we saw that it's possible to improve your results even with a crop that you've been focused on for generations, like cassava. We'd like to thank Caritas Congo for their work and for allowing us to cover it on our series. If you're interested in their work or to make a donation, please visit their website here. Or if you'd like to contribute your skills or knowledge, send them an email here. It also helps if you speak French. We'd also like to thank our sponsors at the Hawaiian Legacy Reforestation Initiative and to thank Mombasa, Kanono Number 1, and the other fine musicians we utilized in this episode. Proceeds from each episode of this series go to support our subject organization. This week, of course, it's Caritas Congo, so please subscribe and share widely and click the link in the corner to subscribe to our channel. We'd also like to give a huge thank you to our individual sponsors who stepped forward big time with the campaign to make this video possible. Possible. So I'll see you in our next episode when we'll be observing a carbon project in the mighty Congolese rainforest with our friends at ERA Wildlife Works. Until next time, I'm Brennan. Peace.
Oh! 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 Oh!